Mahama campaign team. She's joining us on the line. Madam, you're welcome to Eyewitness News. Thank you. Thank you, Maru. Where about in Ghana is the campaign trail? Maru, currently, as I speak to you, we are in Tamale, in I, the northern region. I see. Where and where have you been prior to today? We have been to about 10 regions. We've been to the three Bono regions. We've done central region, western north, western region, upper east, and we are in the northern region, after which we do greater Accra. You've covered a lot of kilometers there. Um, considering that last year and the year before were declared years of road by this uh, government, <laughs> what did you see in terms of the status of the roads as you told Ghana? Omar, for everywhere we went, if there were two major things which the people complained about, road, I would rank it as number two. Number one was the issue of unemployment. And number two has to do with the nature of the road. In all the regions we have been to, every chief, every opinion leader, every group we have met, they have complained about abandoned roads. They have complained about their roads not being constructed. They have complained about the nature of their roads that are actually affecting economic activities. And for me, I haven't seen anything substantially different seven years. And given the resources that this government has, I think that is a shame. The voice partisanship, I think that we could have done better for the people of Ghana. And it's a shame that seven years down the line, we are having to have the same discussions that the, the people were having seven years prior to this government coming into office. I see. Um, are there roads that you left behind under construction, which roads have not been completed, so you can say, well, we started something, these people came and did nothing, or it was a situation or a case of you did nothing, they have done nothing, so you can't really say much. Yeah. Well, before I even answer that question, this campaign or this debate would not be about you did something and I did nothing. You know, let me take you back a bit. In the before era and in the 2008 election, the debate between the NDC and the NPP was always about who had built more hospitals, who had built more roads, who had built more schools. And it was about we did maybe nine and this person says we did six or we are almost at. But as I speak to you, it is what the NDC did against Zero. Coming to the question of rule, in the Bulu regions and in Ashanti region, in communities where they grow cocoa, under the SWAL NDC administration, the party or the government took a decision to develop roads in cocoa growing areas. And so these roads were being developed under the Cocoa Road project. For some of them, when we went to Gosso, for instance, I recall vividly the chief telling us that right in front of Kids Palace, the road had even received the first coat to be asphalted later. But seven years down the line, under the guise of auditing Cocoa Road in the Western North region, in the three Bono region, in part of a hapo, an eastern region which were benefiting from the cocoa road, the roads have even gone bad. Roads where some of them were 50% complete, 70% complete, 80% complete, under the guise of auditing cocoa roads, we have destroyed and dissipated the resources that were invested in. So that was what the NDC started, and that was the state of the road as we speak today. Even inner roads which could have been maintained in various regions. I don't know the north very well, but for some of the towns we went to, like Yenzi, like Gushegu, that I can vividly recall, the chiefs were complaining about roads which we started. For instance, in Yenzi, they complained about the, the Yenzi water project 
which began under the NDC, and seven years down the line, the people of the NDC still do not have access to portable water because this government never continued the project. And so it, it's been about what the NDC did and the nothing that the NPP is not doing, if, if I should put it that way. And trust me, devoid of partisanship, it is a very sad situation. Because one will ask, given the resources that this government has, they should have done triple and double of what the NDC did. But no, the story is not the same. In communities which were not connected to the national grid before the NDC exerted power, those communities still don't have access to electricity in a sunafu north. That is the story. Here in the northern region and some parts of Zibila, that is the story. And I think that I would have loved for the discussion to be that we did this and the NPP came to also do this and then we can have a debate. Because trust me, we don't want a vindication or the NDC doesn't want to be vindicated where the lives of people are being affected. That is not the kind of vindication we want. But as I speak to you, touring more than 10 regions, the story is the same everywhere. Interesting. So what has been former President Muhammad's message to the people everywhere he has gone to? What is his message? So the message has been targeted. And so depending on the region and the community and the message President Mahama has been given to them. So for instance, I, I can tell you that in the training colleges that we have been in all the 10 regions, the major issue affecting the teacher trainees is the issue of the licensure exam. And President Mahama, I'm sure we all know, has promised to cancel it and rather add it to the final year curriculum so that like lawyers, like medical doctors, you don't have to come out, graduate, before you go and write another professional exam to ascertain or to attain a professional status. President Mahama has also been saying that he will not cancel the CSHS, but he will review it to make it better. Because in most places, parents are calling for a better reforms. They are asking that the double track system be abolished. And so that's what he's been saying. President Mahama has been saying that he does not believe that every district must necessarily have a factory. That the cycle of a factory must be based on a comparative advantage, ad advantage I beg your pardon, which region is better placed to produce work. And so in, in the Bono region, for instance, they produce a lot of tomato. So in the next NDC government in the Bono region, we should be processing the tomatoes that are produced. He has also been saying that addressing the concerns of artisans, hairdressers, tailors, that the NDC is going to repeat its promise of introducing the National Apprenticeship Program into a developmental strategy so that young people who want to learn the trade of dressmaking, hairdressing, and all those skills will be supported to learn and also be given startup um, to kids. He has also been saying that one of the reasons why we don't get value for money, especially when it comes to our resources is that we allow foreign companies to come and do prospecting. And so in the next NDC government, it is important that we began to look at things differently. And so we will invest in geological services so that governments can have some equitable and reasonable share in mineral discoveries that are being made. He has also said that when we went to most of the countries, it, it, it will surprise you that the majority of people are involved in agriculture. And so as part of the support for farmers, we are going to set up farmer support services in each district so that farmers who are in cooperatives will be supported with the needed farm inputs to boost agriculture. 
the concerns of many farmers have been that they cannot get access to fertilizer. The fertilizers which are in the system are with NPP party chairmen in various constituencies and districts. And so unless you are politically linked, you may not have access to fertilizer. And the ones which are available in the market are excessively expensive. And so in addressing these concerns, he has promised to establish the Pharma Services Center. In this part mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. country... Mm -hmm. just, 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 just as we wrap up, do you not think that your promises are becoming one too many? Your promise in everything, including everything, and now you're even talking about Ghana Football Association. Are you sure you're no. not over-promising? No, no you, we are not over-promising. L let me give you a typical example. We are a third world country. Every aspect of this country needs to be touched. And so this is the man who, at the same time when he was building schools, we were constructing hospitals, we are supporting farmers with free fertilizers, we were still saving and building economic buffers like the Sinking Fund, the Exim Bank, the Ghana Infrastructure Fund, and everything. We were also managing the cocoa sector better and supporting farmers. All these things were being done. It is the reason why you have sector ministers in various organizations or in various aspects of the economy so that you cannot just come and do one thing. Everything. And, and Umar, let me say that I am the one privileged to be tabulating the concerns of these people. And many of the concerns they are expressing, these are things that can be done through the district assemblies. We are not having to rehabilitate roads because today the district assembly common fund is not getting to them. The people who are supposed to receive support for exports, they are not receiving because the likes of whom to me are beneficiaries of the Exim Bank, which President Mahama set up. So we are only saying that in every aspect of the economy mm. where there seems to be so many wrongs, where corruption is eating it up, where so many things are being done. If we can just go back to the basis, the people should have the benefit of what their taxes are being used for. Because, mm -hmm. uh, Omar, trust me, before finally, if we have lost more than 45 billion cities to corruption, if we have lost so much money by way of the COVID-19 report that the Auditor General released recently, if we only decide to channel these resources to the people of Ghana, I'm not sure that any of these promises can be said to be too much. Very well. And this is a man with a track record. He has done it before and he promises to do it again. Thank you so much for speaking to us. We wish you all the 